Welcome back, everyone, including Ryan! Hooray! Yay! And also Olivia, who's here while we're recording. She's yep. being very quiet right now, but if you hear some squeaky, adorable baby noises, you guys will know what happened. She's real cute. She is adorable. She's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully all of you enjoyed our episode last week, even though our resident lawful good expert was not there. Uh-oh. I know. I did enjoy it, though. It was the first episode I got to enjoy as a fan, and I loved it. Well, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) If you could write a review. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I want to remind everybody that if you, like Ryan, enjoyed our episode and or really like Tolkien's works or you just want to know more weird stuff about elves, Jude's podcast, Athrobeth, will be releasing on Wednesday, which is in just two days. So we will put links to their website and Twitter in the show notes, and I'm sure we'll tweet about it once there's an actual feed available. Um, But I'm so excited about it. It's going to be real good. (laughs) Yeah, it should be really awesome. Also, uh, in just a couple days ago, September marks the beginning of International Podcast Month. As we have mentioned, I will be part of several different special podcasts releasing just for this occasion. We will be sure to tweet about them when they release, but to make sure you keep up with everything, please visit internationalpodcastmonth.com and subscribe to the I Am Here, that's H-E-A-R, podcast feed. Uh, And also, the episode that is releasing today should be one of my episodes, so uh, go check that out. It'd be really awesome. It's very exciting. Mm Mm-hmm. With Ryan finally back, we get to read a review again. Woohoo! Yay! So, a reminder that you can leave them for us on iTunes, Facebook, etc. We always really, really appreciate it. And we, in particular, this week, appreciate this one from Jake Thompson. This is an excellent podcast. I also love creating characters, and as someone starting to dive pretty deep into the tabletop hobby, the show is excellent for getting to know a lot of diverse games. And beyond that, the monthly Character Evolution Cast episodes are wonderful, in-depth discussions of role-playing techniques and adjacent concepts. All in all, it's wonderful. Well, thank you so much, and that review is wonderful, too, so... And probably you're wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you, Jake Thompson, are also wonderful. I am also going to assume that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, everybody, with all of that out of the way, please enjoy the episode. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan. In this episode, my co-host Amelia and I welcome Caleb, Alex, and Cameron from the Sounds Like Crows podcast. We are here to discuss character creation for Deadlands Reloaded, a weird West role-playing game system by Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Welcome to Character Creation Cast. We are super excited to have you guys here. Hey guys! Hey, good, hey, good to, to see, be here. Woo, good to be here as finally. well. Finally, really excited. Finally, for real. So let's start out by introducing everybody. Uh, Caleb, we'll start with you. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and about what you are currently involved in? Uh, yeah, my name is Caleb Sunset. I run an actual play, a Deadlands Reloaded actual play. The system we are building characters for. Uh, it's called Sounds Like Crows. Crows is spelled like Russell Crow. It's uh, pretty similar to. The Shadow of the Cabal podcast in stylistic, stylistically, I think. Would you agree with that, Cameron? Yeah, I'd have to. Yeah, I mean, I think we're pretty inspired by them. Uh, I think we play at the comedy a little more than they do. Um, mm-hmm. It's about all. It's about five brothers that are all from different walks of life that are kind of brought back together uh, as a shared tragedy happens to all of them, and that's pretty much all I do. <laughs> so <laughs> all you do show. all the time, every yes. day. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here, Caleb. Uh, and Cameron, can you tell a bit about yourself and other any other projects that are going on? Uh, yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Cameron Reed. I play Harper on the Sounds Like Crows podcast. 
Uh, I've been playing RPGs for about five years in my free time. I'm always lifting weights and doing fitness stuff, and that's that's all you need to know. I am never doing those things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Alex, what about you? Hi, I'm Alex. Uh, I play Ellis on Sounds Like Crows. Um, as far as projects go, that's the only thing I'm working on. Um, I'm 6'6". Six, six. Uh, my, my dad wasn't around too much when I was a kid. And uh, I've been playing RPGs for about seven years just for fun. Do you also like long walks on the beach? Or? I don't. I live in Colorado. <laughs> okay. There's not really any beaches around. No <laughs> beaches. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, we will start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? So Deadlands is a alternate history Wild West setting that they call Weird West. It's set somewhere between 1878 and 1882, depending on where you want to start in the meta plot. I like to describe it as horror Western steampunk. West, yes, horror Western <laughs> steampunk in that order. Um it's kind of a gonzo setting if you play it that way. There can be T-Rexes fighting mechs fueled by a coal that screams as if souls are dying inside of it. Uh, but we don't play it like that. Uh, we play it very much on the horror side in the Clint Eastwood Western sort of way. Very nice. Yeah. Um, it's It's been around a while. It started... 1996, right? 1996. Thank you, oh. thank you Alex. Um, there's Deadlands Classic which um, the Savage Worlds system was kind of inspired by. And then they made Savage Worlds, which is the system we're in. And then they made Deadlands Reloaded for it, which is the setting and also the system we're playing in. There's some modifications to the Savage World system in Deadlands Reloaded, but not a lot. All the core mechanics are the same. There's just some setting rules tacked on. Okay. So it sounds like you can kind of play a more horror-heavy game if you want to, or you could kind of focus more on the western side of things if you wanted to is it pretty easy to kind of mix and match those parts depending on what you want to do or i think so yeah and depending on where you want to put yourself in the u.s too um things near california get pretty strange like seeing dragons is a common occurrence um and then if you go near salt lake city called the city of gloom it's just steampunk everywhere and then a uh, sort of pacific northwest gets really horror so just based upon where you want to put your campaign, you have a lot of options. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that the parts were all the different places were so different. Yeah. I mean... I had no clue. Yeah, it's a really diverse setting. It is been around so long and so many setting books have been written for it that I'm sure you can find your slice of Deadlands wherever you want to. Uh, the pre-written plot point adventure campaigns are pretty cool. I own a couple of those, although I'm not running any of them currently. So does it have the same problem that L5R has where it gets real stupid real fast? Yeah. If you look too deep into the meta plot, it gets pretty obnoxious. Yeah. I mean, I don't... Everyone has different tastes, and I'm not saying that anyone's style of play is wrong. However, I feel like when you are creating characters that are larger than the player characters and almost seem like the main characters, that's kind of a problem. You know, if you want to make a king that's super powerful, that's a a quest giver sort of NPC type dude. I think that makes sense. But um, the way it's sort of portrayed is here's a lot of people that are way cooler than you that you can't possibly take down. And here's the cool things they're doing while you show up and try to shoot them. I don't know. I, I feel like that's kind of Savage Worlds in a nutshell, though, as a character. You yeah. never really feel like a, a hero. You feel like you're scraping by every day and at any moment you could die. You know what I mean? Actually, yeah, that's true. I've never thought about it that way. But if you look at it from that angle, maybe that's a specific design choice they wanted to make is that you're not the heroes in the world. I like those types of games too, mm -hmm. to be honest, where you're scrounging and tracking provisions and stuff. Yeah. Well, it feels like it fits the Western theme pretty well too, because yeah. there, there's always that sort of looking for riches. And I don't know, it just seems like a pretty common theme in a lot of Westerns is that like just barely making it kind of situation yeah. yeah and that life is expendable and you could die at any moment absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you could almost say that the world is kind of savage <laughs> there it is you you could <laughs> but you wouldn't dare <laughs> oh i would oh, yeah man. i know <laughs> so aside from the core rule book for this game what what else do you need to play it yeah you need 
like you said, the core rulebook for Savage Worlds costs 10 bucks anywhere. And then just get the Deadlands Reloaded Player's Guide costs like 20 bucks. So 30 bucks total. I think it's a pretty easy to... You might need entry. like the GM manual because there is some stuff yeah. even in like character creation in the player's guide that mentions like tables and stuff in the GM manual. Yeah. The Marshall's oh. Handbook is what it's called. Marshall's Handbook, yeah. But you can also kind of find that stuff online. So yeah, that's definitely. Like 20 bucks too. Yeah, definitely. You can find the PDFs for pretty cheap online, drive through RPG and stuff. So yeah. Marshall's Handbook, Player's Hand Guide, and uh, Savage Worlds Deluxe Rulebook. Don't forget a pack of cards. Pack uh, of cards. A bunch of poker, poker chips. chips dice. And a full set of dice. Yes. Uses every die you have except the D100 maybe. And you're going to need internet access to look up all the ambiguous rules that are in there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So then what do characters do in this game exactly? I think it can vary. Um, I think Savage Worlds, specifically Deadlands, uh, has a good focus on, on smaller stories uh, based around like small groups of, of characters. But you can do a lot with it. Um, I feel like it's a pretty heavily combat-based system, so most of the time you're going to yeah. be getting into conflict and, and shootouts of some type. Um, but the, ty- the kinds of stories that you can tell are pretty varied. Um, you can go anywhere from like mad science, time-traveling kind of stuff if you wanted to. You can stick with just the traditional Western stuff. Um, horror games do well in Savage Worlds. I think it also handles very fast action movie-esque games very well. I have um, to agree. Yeah. A lot of the canic- mechanics are very fast moving and reward that style of gameplay for sure. From what I've what I've listened to of your show too, it seems like combat goes pretty quick too, which Yes. I like. Yes. Because I don't like to take forever with that. Mm-hmm. Um those that are more skilled in the system than me say they can get through four or five combats in a three to four hour session easily. And I I could definitely see that. Initiative is crazy quick. If people know what they're doing, the turns are very quick. Um, they definitely focused on that for sure. Yeah, I feel like that's an attractive quality for me because I don't, I, I've been, I mean, because I've been playing L5R forever and those combats can get really bogged down and like take forever, especially the more people that you have at the table, which you guys have a pretty big group too. I think it's definitely, um, oops, I think we played with like seven people or something like that. Yeah. We play theater of mind, but it's pretty clear that it's meant for a table with minis. <laughs> it's fast paced it's a lot faster than any other system i think we've played yeah even at high the nice thing about it is like lots of systems the higher level you get the longer and longer combat takes because there's more and more stuff you can do more attacks you get but savage worlds doesn't really have anything like that yeah it's kind of just like if anything people go down quicker you, you never get more hp you get more toughness the system right. you have three wounds and then the fourth wound you're knocked out yeah it does take some getting used to if you're used to like tr- traditional like D&D or Pathfinder or something like that. But once you get it down, it's really quick. So what would you guys say is unique about this system? What makes it stand out from other games that you've played? The biggest thing that I've noticed is that there are not any classes. Um, Everything that you do uh, to build your character is based on a list of edges, which are basically your abilities. Um, So you don't have specific parameters uh, to pick your abilities outside of um, basically what your character can do in terms of their uh, attributes. So you have pretty much an open, white, clean slate to uh, to build your character however you'd like to do it. I think the way they handle attributes and skills is pretty unique as well. Instead of anything, instead of anything having modifiers to like a flat d20 roll, for example, or instead of building a pool of dice in which you get like more dice, the better you are at something, your die type just increases. So you can be a d4 in something, or you can be a d8 in something, or a d12. And that makes it pretty easy to show new players how that works. Uh, in addition, it has uh, acing dice is what they call it. I think commonly known as exploding dice, where if you roll the maximum value on a die, you get to roll it again and then add both of the values together. So you can get some crazy results where people are taken from full health to dead and can't do anything about it. I think just in general, I think there's a lot of room for creativity and um, I wouldn't say like rules bending, but interpreting the rules in a certain way, I guess, to kind of like to fit your play style or fit the game or fit the flavor of your character. Uh, Like Cameron said, there's no classes, 
but through edges and things of that nature, you can pretty much build your character however you want. And even down to like the spells in the spell book are very general descriptions. It's not like Firebolt, where you shoot a fireball. It just says like Bolt. And you get to pick what you want that to look like, how that, you know, how your character produces that, things like that, which it does very well. And I think it's very, I think it's more character driven than some RPGs too. There's a lot of emphasis on the character building process and like, like D&D, you don't have a section where you pick what's wrong with your character. But in, in this, <laughs> there is. Like, people don't really think about that too much, but I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like what's in there is really flexible. Exactly. Um, so even the things that are in there, you have, you know, a certain number of options and things that you have to pick, but it feels like you can kind of mix and match and any of those things feel like you can kind of flavor them how you want it to. Yeah, which... I think it's something most people do in most systems anyway, but it's nice that it's baked into the core mechanics of the game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Kind of like a, a forced homebrew in a way. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, we, we talked a bit about the history of the system earlier. Um, I was just kind of curious as a follow-up to that. Uh, the You said the meta plot uh, kind of has been building up over time. Does that go all the way back to the beginning? from uh, Deadlands, the, the the first edition? I believe so. I am wow. not super familiar with Deadlands Classic, unfortunately, but all the major characters they've made up for their world uh, transition between both. Anything that occurred in Classic, they kind of recap in the current books for Reloaded. But if you wanted to, you could definitely go back and read comic books dating from like 98 or something to now oh wow i was gonna ask how is that meta plot put out is it through like supplement adventures or is there like fiction how do they put that out into the world man everything they've got novels they've got comic books they talk about it in the plot point campaigns and then there's some like one shot adventures that add on to it too oh wow yeah so that's a lot to keep track of yeah, man, which which is why I mostly ignore it. I'm sure I'm sure if you've been around in the Deadlands scene for, you know, that many years, I'm sure it's incredible to you. That's really really cool, but you know, we only got into it maybe 8 years ago, 6 years ago, so and I wasn't too heavily invested when I first got into it. Is it still continuing? Is that still going on? Are we making more plot? Yeah, it's still kicking. Uh, I think their <laughs> last plot point campaign released last year, maybe? Yeah, I think right now they're working on some other settings and other stuff like that. But as far as I know, they're still, they still have stuff, you know, cooking. They're working on a new update to the Savage World setting, which we'll probably update to on the show when it releases. But Yeah, and I'm sure that will have some updates to the, uh, Deadlands. Um, the Deadlands system itself. Yeah. Cool. So... Before we go into the actual creation of characters, we usually like to cover a couple of basic terms that people might not be familiar with, um, so they know what we're talking about. And this game has a lot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I want to start with attributes. Um, can you guys explain a little bit about what those are? Yeah. So attributes are like your basic ability score modifiers that you would have in, in any basic RPG. Um, they include uh, agility, smarts, strength, spirit, and vigor. Uh, agility is, you know, dexterity, agility, uh, how well your character moves, how quick they are. Smarts is obviously intelligence. Um, that has a lot to do with, um, like, investigation, uh, notice, and uh, anything that basically requires any level of intelligence is wrapped up in there. Um, strength is, you know, strength. Every every game has strength <laughs> in it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, <laughs> spirit is basically a combination of, like, wisdom and willpower, kind of. Um and in Deadlands specifically, it's useful because it's linked to guts, which is your mm. fear check. Whenever you encounter anything unnatural or supernatural, you have to make a guts check. And if you fail, there's a possibility you could go insane or you could have a heart attack. Yeah, it comes oh, wow. up a lot. And then yeah. the final one is vigor, which is your constitution slash toughness. Yeah, it doesn't have any skills associated with it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I thought that was interesting when I was looking through. I was like, nothing keys off of that. So it's just like a straight roll whenever you have to make those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your toughness is based on it and how we can get into it more later. But how damage works is you'd roll damage and you'd roll against their toughness. And if you get four above it, you deal a wound to them. So that's your that's a difference between being killed 
or uh, staying alive. Well, in my case, it wouldn't have mattered how much my t- how high my toughness was. No spoilers, though. <laughs> no, Alice is alive still. <laughs> um, so, like, I maybe should have put more than a D four in that. I don't know, because honestly, I don't know. We'll get into so that much. later. It's, maybe. It's, it's, <laughs> especially like when things start to get swingy too. It's hard to like. It's, yeah. You know. The thing I, is, like every everything you invest in it to vigor, like every die type you invest into it, only increases your toughness by one. And in Savage Worlds, it's kind of like, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter that much, like one, because of how much like dice blow up and stuff like that. Usually, they're gonna beat you by like, I think Ellis had like twenty over his toughness. Wow. So that one would like wouldn't have mattered in that situation. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Skills. They're a thing in this game. And they are. They, they are. are a they're thing. a thing in every game. Hey, you want to field skills over there, Alex? You're not doing anything. Yeah, sure. I can I can field <laughs> some skills, Caleb. <laughs> what do you got? So the skills are just like in in, the, um, in another system. You would have skills like in D and D fifth edition, they have like, you know, intimidation, athletics, that kind of thing. Um so it's the same in this. Um each skill is linked to an attribute. And um, if you want to increase that skill, you have to buy into it. So it's a little bit more difficult to have like a wide range of skills in Savage Worlds. You can't just be like, oh, I have really high charisma, so I'm good at all charisma-based skills. You have to buy into individual skills. You can't just have, you know, blanket all all the charisma skills. So you really have to think about that during character creation. You kind of have to try and plan out what you want your character to be good at. And you also want to buy those skills. We'll get, we might get into it later. You want to buy the skills... It's more efficient to buy them during character creation than later on because it costs more points. And yeah, skills are essentially you want to pick attributes that are linked to the skills you're going to want to buy later. Right. So if you have a D4 in smarts, if you want to buy over a D4 in any skill that's under smarts, then it will cost you more points than if you were just buying up to what you have in smarts. Yeah. If that makes sense. So when you buy into a skill, do you start... At D4 and the first point takes you to a D6, or do you no. start with nothing and the first point takes you to a D4? Yeah, that's the thing. You start with nothing. So if you're untrained in a skill during the gameplay, you'll roll a D4, but you have to subtract two. So oh. when you buy into a skill, it puts you at that point where you don't have to do that, essentially. And this game doesn't really do um, sliding target numbers. Your target number is always four. So as you can imagine, rolling a four on a D4 and negative two is pretty difficult. Right. And there could be other modifiers that decrease it or increase it depending on what's going on. But yeah, skills are very tricky in this game just to kind of, when you, when you make a character, you feel like, oh man, I can't do anything because <laughs> I put everything into fighting. Now, now I have a D4 <laughs> and writing and it just gets, it gets pretty tricky sometimes. It does a good job of making you not feel like a hero. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now you can, like as a DM, you can, or a GM, you can decide to like start your players at higher, um, levels kind of they don't really have a level system but they have um, ranks and so they'll get more options for skills and edges and stuff but caleb didn't do that for us nope well (laughs) he doesn't love you no No, i really don't it's like well i think you can love and hate someone at the same time (laughs) (laughs) that's true that's true. You want to know more about that? Just listen to Sounds Like Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's a shameless plug. I'm sorry. No, that was, but that, yeah, that really sums that up, doesn't it? <laughs> That's, I love you, but man, I hate your guts. Yeah. That's. Yeah. That's the show. <laughs> That's the show. <laughs> but something you can do to help out some of the skills you have is you can get edges and hindrances. So these are big ticket items that define who your character is. In a character creation, you can have up to one major hindrance, which could be something like missing a leg or missing an eye, or you could have, and you could have up to two minor hindrances, which is something like mean or an alcoholic or something. A addiction. minor enemy. Minor enemy, yeah. Um, And then you have your edges, which are good for you. Uh, You can get things like attractive. You can get things like... Uh, Quick draw. They're basically your abilities. This is what, in another system, would define your class. Yeah. So this is is what's going to define how effective you are with, say, melee weapons. There are edges that will uh, allow you to make multiple attacks with them. There are edges that make you more effective with firearms, uh, all kinds of things. And also some are like feats too, like yeah. you would find in D&D or Pathfinder or something. It's where you get a lot of your flavor too in both edges and hindrances. But lots of edges also have, like we talked about, like uh, skills and attributes linked to them where you have to have a minimum skill or attribute. So that's another part where you're making your character, you got to kind of plan ahead 
as to what edges you want because they might be uh, locked for you if you don't have the right attributes or skills. Yeah, there are times when you definitely have to kind of work backwards from the from the edges to your attributes and your skills. Um, sometimes you'll have your eye on a certain edge and uh, none of your stuff will fit. So you kind of have to go back and rework your stuff to make sure that you can fit that. Yeah, format wise, they tell you to do that last, I think, the edges and hindrances, but I would almost don't pick them, but look over the list of edges and hindrances before you start making your character. Yeah, at least know what you're aiming for before you start uh, throwing your attributes and your skills together. Or don't like I'm doing today. <laughs> yeah. Don't do anything. Just, <laughs> just wing just it. Wing it. <gasps> just have an eraser. Yeah, it just, yeah, I was going to say it's important to do it in pencil because I had to erase things a few times mm-hmm. to move I only make character fit. sheets in permanent marker. <laughs> I've committed. <laughs> I use blood. Sharpie or I nothing. Use blood. <laughs> blood. <laughs> well, that's a requirement so, in my games. That's, what are bennies for people who haven't played a Savage World system before? A benny is also another word for benefit, which apparently is a slang term, which I'm not familiar with. <laughs> but in uh, in Savage Worlds, they're used to help you re-roll stuff. So anytime you want to re-roll something, you can spend a benny. You'd start the session with three of them, and you'd get more as the game progressed. And you could spend one and re-roll. In Deadlands, you actually get fate chips, which... Um, works similar to Benny's, but depending on the color you get, and there's three colors to start with, they have different effects. Basically, the creators play tested the game, and they're like, "Wow, this is really hard. We should figure out a way for players to legally cheat within the rules." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they made Benny's. Yeah, it's a good way to counter the fact that this game is very, very swingy. Um, you can also use them not just to reroll a skill check or um, like a failed check. You can also use them um, to soak. So uh, say you take a bunch of damage and you're expecting two or three wounds um, out of your your top four. So what you would do is you would uh, use a Benny and then you would roll your Vigor. And if you you hit a four or higher, then you will soak one of those wounds. So it's a good way to kind of counteract the fact that somebody can just do, you know, 15 damage to you. Yeah. And you can, if you're lucky, you can negate all of that. That's probably the smartest use of binnies is to soak unless you get snake eyes on something because that's a whole thing but yeah um some other terms you might want to know are uh, shaken which occurs when you're shot at and your toughness is beat but they don't get a raise over your toughness you're just shaken it means you're kind of like staggered stunned and you can't do anything on your turn unless you make a spirit roll that's another reason spirit's important for combat specifically um i should touch on raises too shouldn't i Mm -hmm. So like I said, the target number is always four. Anytime you're rolling dice, there might be modifiers, um, but the targets are always four unless you're attacking someone in melee. But if you get four over that, so if you get eight, for every four over that, you get a raise. And a raise when you're shooting somebody could deal extra damage, but a raise when you're intimidating somebody could mean that you're getting more information that you asked for. Or if you're gambling, maybe you win more money depending on how many raises you get over the target number. And those in this game happen automatically, correct? Like you, if you correct. roll over that number, correct. you get that. There are some you don't systems, have to call it ahead of time. Yeah, there are some systems you know that are pretty bad at doing that sort of thing that you have to call them beforehand. I don't know what those systems would be, Amelia, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, or like know. who would want to play a game like that? Right, or... I can't imagine. <laughs> it's a bad mechanic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... this is a tangent, but are they fixing that in uh, in Fantasy Flight's version? Do you know? They are. Yes. Okay. Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I don't think that you can make raises. Okay, cool. Heck yeah. Yeah, it's good. Um, anything else that you guys think is important that people know? Um, Alex is six foot six. <laughs> <laughs> he does not like long walks. Yeah, he doesn't play basketball, so I don't, don't ask him. That's don't true. ask him. Hey, how's the weather up there, huh? Don't do it. <laughs> uh, there's also powers which some of our some of us might get powers which are deadlands and savage worlds term for supernatural abilities so if any of us are a blessed huckster shaman uh mad scientist we'll get powers yeah. and we'll... this is the savage world spell casting basically thank you it's a much better way to say it that's no, swinging a miss, Caleb. Don't yeah. worry, I got your back, dude. Good looking out. <laughs> this one time he has my back. <laughs> wow. Um, I think. <laughs> oh goodness. 
All right. Well, if there's nothing else to cover, why don't we go ahead and make some people? Woo! Yeah. Exciting. Cool. Let's make some people. So, so you two are the ones that are new to this system. Do you guys have any idea what you're going to make? I'm going to make a huckster. Excellent. Yeah, yeah figured, cool. Thaddeus. A huckster. Good. <laughs> See, I, I was going through the system and I'm like, I, I, I know of these terms, but I have no idea yeah. what half of these things mean. <laughs> well, we're here for you. Yeah. Don't yeah, worry about it. That's what this show is about, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, right. Buddy. <laughs> right. So what is a huckster, Amelia? It's a, it's a, oh. Go for it. I'm not, no, I'm not you Amelia. will explain it They're both than A names. All right. If you want me to, it's a, it's a spellcaster who channels basically um, power from a realm known as um, the hunting grounds, right? Is it the haunting grounds? The hunting grounds. The hunting correct. grounds um, to cast spells. So it's almost like demonic energy and um, they all carry like a deck of cards to cast their spells as kind of like their um, spellcasting focus. Nice. So you're like, um, you're like a magician, like a card magician, as if they had real magical powers. And everyone thought they came from the devil and they were burned at the stake yeah, quite and they're, frequently. They're, they're a little bit like warlocks in a way, right? Because they, they're all dealing with these basically demons um, known as Manitou. They're like evil spirits. Yeah, evil spirits. And uh, the, the way that they cast their spells is by basically beating them in a hand of cards. And like the stakes are the power of the spell. So you, you bet the spell. And if you beat them, then you cast it. And that's kind of the flavor of a huckster and how they work. In oh, Deadlands Classic, you actually had to, every time you wanted to cast a spell, do an aside where you played a game of Texas Hold'em with a demon <laughs> before you cast your spell, and oh, then goodness. it went off. I'm glad they took that out. Yeah. That taking so long. <laughs> I think yeah. they took it out for time. So you still have an option to do that as a huckster if you want a more powerful spell or if you're out of power points to spend on your powers, but you can just have a pool of points that you cast with normally. That's pretty cool, though, that they kind of still kept it in there if you want it to be a little bit more uh, oomph behind your ability. Yeah. 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 It's really cool. It can bring out some really dramatic scenes and some like some really intense moments. And in Oops. Deadlands, all the spellcasting classes come with pre-baked trappings. So whereas normally it's, okay, I'm using a bolt spell, but I'm a, I'm a fire mage or something. So you'd apply the fire trapping and it'd do fire damage and it'd set things on fire. In Deadlands, it pre-tells you what most of those trappings are flavored for uh, gamblers and um, card magicians. Oh, cool. I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. What are you playing, Ryan? All right. Um, so I tried promising myself to make somebody uh, outside of my comfort zone this time. Um, so I am making um, an outlaw who is really good with a gun. Cool. cool. I'm, you're not playing a medic. I'm no. surprised. Yeah. <laughs> this, this guy is all blast. about killing. <laughs> I'm so proud of killing you. Killing and stealing. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. You can be a gunslinger, but the way Savage World works is uh, you could just pick one edge and all suddenly you can heal. So that's always an option for you. Oh my yeah, God. that's definitely not on my for this character. <laughs> but fortunately for the party, I'm playing a Blessed, which are kind of the healers in this world. They are um, like Christians, Catholics, Mormons, sort of the... Um, Man, what's a good word for it that isn't offensive? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Religious? Yeah, just religious. Highly religious. They're Highly basically religious. the clerics of this world. Yeah, they're clerics, clerics of this world. Yes. Um, I'm going to be playing some sort of blessed. Don't know what yet. He's probably going to have a gun of some kind. Um, I am planning on playing somebody who's a, a gambler, a smooth talker. Uh, the face of the, of the party is kind of what I'm aiming for. He's also trying to get far away from himself. Yeah. Yeah, the opposite. The opposite of me. Yeah. Charismatic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, camera got my joke, you guys. <laughs> and I am playing, uh, I want to get a little weird with it. I'm going to be um, basically a, an orc barbarian, but it's going to be <laughs> a lumberjack who wields a big wood cutting axe, I think. Oh, nice. So I'm going to take some mealy edges and stuff like that. Are you, do you wear flannel? That has to be decided. We'll see if I can afford it when we get to the gear portion. <laughs> <laughs> I started looking at that, but then I was like, oh, math. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I priced out all of my gear uh, earlier today uh, because I, I was overwhelmed by it. Yeah, there's a lot, there's in a there. lot of gear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
What I like to do is buy tent donkeys to start That's the game. That's a good play. <laughs> and then just barter, see what happens. Yeah. You can get a lot from a donkey. A lot from yep. 10. I don't know if you can buy 10 donkeys, but I'm going to make it work. We'll, we'll pull out. our money together. Just we'll pick, get those donkeys. Pick the rich edge, and then you can afford 10 donkeys. Get the super I th- rich. I think it does say that you still have to buy your clothes, too. Yeah. Yeah. Savage worlds. <laughs> Savage worlds. <laughs> I've made that mistake before. <laughs> Can you can you not though? If, yeah, if you like, want. I mean, sometimes you spend yeah. too I mean, much money. You get to the point where you're like, okay, guys, I'm ready to play. You Caleb do you? Says, what what stuff do you have? And you list off all your stuff. And you said you didn't buy any clothes. And then uh, you sit there in silence, and everybody looks at you. And then you have to delete some of your stuff and buy clothes. This or isn't just a joke. It's just naked. sad. Yeah, this is just sad. And this is just a real life experiment experience <clears throat> for me. And it's, yeah, it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And now it's recorded, and now everyone will know. Everyone. I hope so. The worst part is everyone showed in costume to that session. So, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he was in big trouble. <laughs> Dress as your character. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right. So, what is the best place to start here? Now that we've kind of picked our not really classes, but our our sort of flavors of people. You typically start with race in Savage Worlds, you know, so Alex, you could play an orc barbarian, but unfortunately, Not in Deadlands. it's Deadlands, it's the weird wild west. Everybody's human. Everyone's human. I like that there was a cat, like that the book is like race, first choose your race. Right. Just, <laughs> just kidding. Just like, kidding. You can't. You can't be a cat person. Just kidding. <laughs> there's, it's everyone's human. Oh man, there's actually a lot of that stuff in here. Um, if you guys try to play this and you try to look up the rules for guts, good luck. <laughs> yeah, basically the first edition they had had a whole section on guts and then the second one they just kind of ignored it so, so when we started playing like half of us were like what's guts like kale's like all right make a guts check and we're like what what the heck is that <laughs> is it a skill is it something that we just inertly have no it's a skill you have to invest in and then it points you to the deluxe guide which guts is also not in <laughs> <laughs> is, is guts just a ploy to buy more books come on <laughs> I think that's the guts check is like how long can you go looking through these books <laughs> right. and like how that's far you get is how well check. you do on that roll. That would be if someone's writing an RPG out there, that's a good joke. You should do that in your <laughs> yeah. book. Reference a skill that everyone needs and is never in your book. That's a hell of a bit. Yep. It's yep. a good prank. Um, the thing that does come with being a human though is you get a free edge. So if you want to pick that right now. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, we could all do that now for fun, or we could do it later when we pick edges and hindrances. I don't know if we should start with, like, the book tells you to start with the skills and attributes. Yeah. But it, it makes a lot more sense. It has background as, like, the last step, but that makes a lot more sense to do background first, which we already did. So maybe look at, look through, like, edges and stuff is my suggestion, and then see if there's any, like, just so you know what the um, requirements are for it. Mm-hmm. And then go from there for your attributes and skills, I think. Long story short, there's no good place to start. Yeah, <laughs> just pick a spot and go for it. Yeah, well, Maybe the best place to start is don't play this game. <laughs> <laughs> just listen to us play it, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That was that was a much uh, more desperate plug than yours. <laughs> Smooth. What's the please plug play. limit for this? Watch, What's play. the plug limit? Uh, two a minute. Two a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Do you guys want to start with attributes? Um. How do you feel? I mean, yeah. I have a pretty yeah. good idea of what types of attributes I'm going to be after. So, I mean, yeah, if you I, guys feel comfortable doing that, I'm fine with doing I'm that. I'm starting with the hindrances and edges myself. Oh, yeah, that's another thing we should mention. I think we, I think Caleb might have mentioned it earlier. but um, So you get the one free edge because you're human. And then you have an option. You have to get at least, I think you're required to get at least one hindrance. Correct. But you don't have to get more than that. But they give you points to spend yeah. on edges. So... I don't think I've ever played with anybody who hasn't taken all the hindrances they can just because they want all the edges. But if you want two more edges when you're making your character, you have to take at least one major hindrance and two minor. You're not allowed to do any more, though. We're not allowed to get points for more. I guess you can have all the hindrances you want. Alex, I think we should all start on the same page. So if, if you really want to do edges and hindrances first. Oh, it, either way works for me if you guys want to start. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. If, I yeah. think you're outvoted. Whatever, you're, whatever Amelia and Ryan want to do, honestly, since they're new to this. What would make you guys? Well, let's start with attributes and stuff because I really am not entirely sure on what yeah. edges I want to take yet. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, just do it in pencil and we're good. So if mm-hmm. we're starting in attributes, all of your attributes start at a D4, thankfully, unlike mm-hmm. skills. So depending on which character sheet you have, you can just fill that in right now or you can wait to assign them. You have five points 
to spend on attributes and increasing the die type by one costs a point, plain and simple. So if you wanted to get a D12 in something and a D4 in everything else, that's your prerogative. Okay. What would you suggest? Kind of depends on what you want to do with your character, I think. Like, uh, for example, when I was building Ellis, he's like a, a kung fu master. And for one of the edges I wanted, I had to add spirit. So I had to get my spirit up. I had to get my agility up because that's what hand-to-hand combat's based off of. And at the same time, I had to focus on strength because that's what my damage is based off of. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. so you want your best skills. You should be shooting for a D8, I feel like. I so if, if you want to get a D8 in a skill more than one skill underneath an attribute, I'd probably bump that attribute to a D8. So for you, Amelia, if you're doing a Huckster, I think your spell casting is smart. So mm-hmm. I would put your smarts to a D8, and then kind of wherever you want to go from there is up to you. Yeah, it kind of depends on what else you want to do. So uh, Savage Worlds, unfortunately, kind of forces you to have a dump stat if you want to be effective in what you're planning to do. So... Uh, uh, for my I character, I picked vigor as my dump stat. Yeah, <laughs> yep, that's yeah, it. that happens a lot. Happens to be lot, honest, yeah. um, my character, I'm going to go with a D6 in agility. Um, I'm going to take my smarts up to a D8 because that has uh, gambling, investigation, some notice stuff. Uh, uh, I'm leaving my strength at a D4 as well as my vigor, and then my spirit is also up at, at a D8, which um, has intimidation and persuasion attached. And I haven't picked a single attribute yet, so. There you go. Well, that's what you got going on, Cameron. Yeah. Um, uh, Amelia, Ryan, did you guys have your attributes already picked out? Yeah. I, th- I do. I think I've got yeah, Ryan, two. do you want to go first? Yeah. So uh, since I wanted to focus on uh, shooting ability and and probably a little bit of the um, underhandedness like lockpicking and whatnot, um, I kind of put my agility up to a D10. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Um, so I think that took three points to do. Yep. And then I wanted a little bit more smarts and spirit, uh, so I put both of those up to a D6. Sweet. And you can also, as we level, I know that this this specific episode is not going to cover that, but as you level, you can boost uh, your attribute. Oh, nice. So um, don't ever feel like if you pick a D4 in something that it's never going to be able to get higher than that. But it is very rare. We'll it point is, that yeah. Out. It's difficult to do, but you can do it. You get it once per advance, essentially. So Once per rank. Right. Yeah, one, one's per rank. Yeah, sorry. So you can do it, what, three, four times throughout the total? Just to give you an idea, throughout like the first entire season of Sounds Like Crows, I think we maybe earned one, maybe two at the end. Two ranks. At the very end, I think we might have unlocked yeah. the next, yeah, rank. Oh, wow. So the way that leveling works is you start at novice, and then you have basically four um, stepping stones that you need to hit before you get to uh, veteran or... Seasoned. It, is it legendary that's the top one? Legendary is the top. So it goes novice, seasoned, veteran. Heroic, legendary. Heroic, legendary. So there's five ranks. Uh, ranks, And there's four stepping stones between each one of those. So you can basically intrude your, uh, increase your attributes five times throughout the entire game. Is this making sense? Character. Is this yeah, sound like nonsense? Yeah, okay. Who didn't do their attributes yet? I got my attributes. I don't think I announced them, though. What do you have? So I have... Um, my guy's real big and burly, uh, but he's not real smart. He's not real agile. So I've got a D4 in agility and smarts. Uh, I've got a D6 in spirit, and then I put a D8 in both um, strength and vigor. Nice. I did a D4 in agility, a D6 in smarts, a D4 in strength, a D8 in spirit, and a D8 in vigor. So I'm vigorous and spirited. Excellent. Yeah. So both of you guys are going to be a lot tougher and uh, have a lot, basically a higher uh, AC or toughness. So it's going to be a higher target when somebody is trying to do damage to you. I think he gets beat up a lot. That's why he has a lot of vigor. (laughs) That makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. Just like got bullied real bad in elementary school. His Mm -hmm. whole life, I think. (laughs) So. (laughs) Hey, that was my backstory. (laughs) IRL. I was about to make the same joke, but better, (laughs) Alex. Sorry. (laughs) <laughs> so uh, now we move on to skills, unless anybody else has anything else. I don't think so. I don't think so. Here we go. We got 15 points to spend in skills. Mm-hmm. Yep. So same thing, um, except everything starts at nothing. So if you want to buy to a D4, it costs you a point. So for example, um, I need shooting. 
uh, just a little bit. I want a D6, but my agility is only a D4, which is the linked attribute. So my first point to buy to a D4 costs one, and instead it costs an additional two to buy to a D6. So I'm spending three points on shooting to get it to a D6. And I think it's important to note here that as you progress in the game, when you get um, advances, it costs you an entire advance to buy into a skill. So essentially two points. So it's much better to pick up all the skills you want when you're making your character, even if it's just a D4. And then later on, you can rank it up because it costs two points to buy into it, but it only costs one point to skill it up if it's equal or lesser oh, than your... Average. Interesting. Oh, that's good to know. That is good yeah. to know. Again, reinforcing the feel that you're just yeah. trash. Because if you want to be skilled at stuff, it's just going to be like D4, 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 and then fighting's going to be like a D12. Yeah. <laughs> if you're me. Yeah. <laughs> and to put that in perspective, I think Wyatt Earp has a D8 in shooting. Doc Holliday is a D12 plus two. So, I mean... Wow, Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday is really good. Okay, so I'm picking... Uh, I spent three points on shooting so far. Um, I'm going to do the same thing in fighting. I'm going to spend another three points on it. Um, and then Blessed have a skill called Faith, I believe. I'm not looking it up. So if I'm wrong, listeners, tweet at me, Marshall Caleb. Uh, and I'm going to buy it up to a D8, which is what my spirit is. So that costs me three points, the same as buying a D6 in the ones that's over the attribute. And I'm just going to keep going, I guess. Do you guys have a list of the skills over there and have like a pretty good idea of Yeah, I'm what looking up do? one extra skill right now because um, I decided to lower one of the ones I had selected before to uh, D4 and add another skill, uh, thinking a little bit ahead. That's a good call. Yeah, I feel like I'm pretty happy with mine. Where is this skill? Oh, oh there it is. I found it. They're in alphabetical. Yeah, no, I see that. <laughs> and I think most skills, um, they don't really do anything except for give you, you know, that skill, except for fighting is used to calculate your parry, which is how hard you are to hit. It's basically your AC. So if you don't put anything to fighting, you're going to be really easy to hit in like melee combat. But it does not affect how easy you are to hit with like a, a ranged weapon. Okay. All right. Oh, what I did was I just went through the skills and just wrote down all the ones I wanted, and now I'm going to like distribute the points, if that makes sense. I don't yeah. know. I think that's easy. Oh. Hey, that's what I did too. That's interesting. Nice. Yeah, you guys have character sheets where you have to write them down. I just have them all pre printed. Oh, wow. Look at you with your pre printed yeah. skills. I on printed you one of these, Alex. You didn't want it. I brought my own. Yours doesn't have a <laughs> noose on it. Mine, that, that's not a good joke for anyone. It's not a joke. It's just cool. It's like flavorful. You know what I mean? It is flavorful. <laughs> I have spent. It's got bullets on it. It's got a, a coffin. It's cool. I have spent all 15 points, you guys. Well, I, I have spent. Um, I got a D6 in fighting, I've got a D6 in shooting, D4 in throwing for the dynamite, and maybe some bottles of whiskey, I'm not sure yet, we'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, D6 in healing, which is the traditional kind of healing, bandaging, that sort of thing. D4 in investigation, because I think he gets up to that. D4 in occult, because maybe he's had a run-in with some of the weirder side of the West. Uh, D4 in survival. And a D8 in faith, as previously mentioned. That's me. Nice. Perfect. I mean, I have my uh, skills picked out. Yeah. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed a D4 in riding because, I mean, we're in the Old West. You need to know how to ride a no, horse. No, I forgot. <laughs> yep. You need to know uh -oh. how to ride a horse. <laughs> um, I picked a D6 in shooting. I don't think he's a particularly good shot, but he is, uh, he is skilled with a gun. Um, I went with a D4 in stealth because I imagine my character being uh, at least a little bit shysty. Um, I went ahead and grabbed a D6 in gambling, um, a D8 in notice, um, a D4 in streetwise, a D6 in taunt, and then I grabbed a D8 in persuasion. Nice. So I uh, I went ahead and grabbed um, a D6 in climbing. Don't know. I don't know. I'm a lumberjack. I thought he would probably be able to climb. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then I basically sense. just pumped everything into fighting. Uh, got it up to a D10. It's based off of agility, so I That's it crazy. spent a lot of points wow. because it went over every point. Cost me two essentially. <laughs> wow. wow. And then I just went with a little bit of intimidation. Notice writing, stealth, swimming, and throwing all at D4s. It was pretty basic. You're better at hitting things with an axe than I am at praying. That's what I do all day. You know, I just <laughs> out there in the woods. And there's things in those woods too, Caleb, by the way. There's monsters and stuff out there, you know. And, and trees? In the woods. Well, there are probably monsters in the trees too. Have you ever heard of drop bears? That some of the trees probably are monsters. 
I don't think I've ever in been the weird in the West. West. This I don't is think a I've very ever been in the weird West. West. It, it is, is a very weird West. West. We almost yeah, said that in the Apparently, there's dinosaurs <laughs> too. Somebody said something about dinosaurs on Twitter or yeah, something. Yeah, they'll come up. They'll come up. So. <clears throat> yep, that's that's my guy. That's awesome. Um, I've got my skills picked out. Go for um, it. Um, so I put my shooting up to a D12. There you go. Wow. Very good shot. Just right off the bat. Murder. Um, since incredible. my agility is already a D10, um, that only took six points. Yeah. Um, I've got riding at a D4, lock picking at a D4, gambling at a D4, fighting and guts both at a D4, and then I took taunt and intimidation both at a D6. Nice. I totally forgot guts. <laughs> I did too. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> There you go. Okay, That's maybe. how it gets you. I'm going to have to erase I some of these purposefully skills. purposefully didn't pick Guts because I imagine my character not really uh, being familiar with the weirder side of the West and probably isn't used to seeing things like zombies or werewolves. Hmm. I'm going to fix mine and take Guts right now. Yeah, oh, I, on the other hand, yeah, I'm just going to change my skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feel free. I mean, you're not locked in until the episode's done. So The only reason I'm doing it is because there's an edge I want that requires Guts, I think. I'm just going to look it up real fast. I got rid of my survival. Can't make a fire anymore, but I can not freak out at the sight oh. of blood. Well just done. Probably important for like a doctor dude. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, and I, I did yeah. my taunt and intimidation at uh, D6 level because I believe I need it that high for a particular edge. Wow, very nice job. Wow, you're thinking ahead. Yeah, you've got some foresight wow. there. All right. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to move some stuff around. I can't now. swim anymore. Yeah. I'm not good at mm-hmm. swimming, and I can no longer be stealthy. But man, I got a D6 in good. I'm glad someone else is garbage at this like I am, Amelia. It's, yeah, I mean. But that was harsh, Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you talking about me? How I like to make characters, how I like to make characters is I like to show up to the table and then just kind of roll for stuff until I figure it out, you know? <laughs> figure out the background right there. That's not true. Actually, normally I try to, I pick like an actor in a show and I try to do a really good impression of them. Hey, I think I like that's for voice. a separate portion of this podcast, Caleb. Well, maybe it is, Alex, <laughs> but, but I don't have a character voice for this guy. That's fine. Caleb, You've got time. We can Caleb one puts out. a yeah. lot of time into voices, by the way. They're very good. They are. He's pretty good. They're at good it. voices. Oh, thanks, guy. All right. So I picked Knowledge Occult. Good. At a D6. I can't read this sheet. Hold on. I erased so much stuff that I can't tell what's filled <laughs> up now. Um, I have Gambling at a D4. I have Notice, I think, at a D4. Hard to tell. Um, Hexen, I got a D6. Good. Riding, I put it at a D4. Persuasion, I put it at a D6. No, D8. Hmm. This is not good writing, you guys. Do it on a computer because you can't tell what you erased. Never. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a D6 in shooting and a D4 in guts and a D4 in knowledge history. Nice. Cool. Sweet. I think the only skill that isn't obvious would be knowledge occult, at least to me. Um, it's used to make any sort of roles about monsters in the Weird West. Come across a werewolf. You know, you want to roll to know if you can kill it with silver, you roll a cult. I did completely redo my skills for a one edge. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you change? Oh, um, so I kept the climbing at a D6. I had to keep the fighting at a D10, obviously. Have to. Have to. Uh, Intimidation is just at a D4. I had to get knowledge of cult, so I got it up to a D6. That cost me two skills because I have to spend two points on it. And then I, I got writing and I got my guts up to a D6 as well. There's only two things he's good at. Fighting. And knowing that werewolves are killed with silver. (laughs) (laughs) And also also climbing. So punching werewolves, then? I use an axe. Werewolf punch. I should probably have a silver lumberjack's axe. You should have a silver. How much does that cost? Yeah, good luck. How how much does that cost? That sounds cool. (laughs) Just go prospecting for some silver. You'll be fine. If okay. I was your GM, I'd just let you have that, Alex. Excellent. Thanks, because this is my next character. Or like brass knuckles that are silver. Ooh. So silver Ooh, knuckles, that would be really cool. That would be cool. Too bad it, for, like for a, punching too werewolf. Too bad a certain character who would have liked that is... Nah, the spoilers. The spoilers. <laughs> 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 All right, so if everyone's done with skills, I think we move on to edges and hindrances, right? Mm-hmm. I think so, yeah. Cool. So the way this works... Oh, wait. Work... No. Derive stats first. Derived stats first. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that <laughs> is, I'm going to go. Those are super easy. Yeah, yeah, they're super easy. So your grit is just equal, equal to your rank. So you should all have one because we're novices. 
Uh, grit is added to your guts rolls as a flat modifier. That's useful because in the game, most times you're making a guts roll, there are negatives based upon how scary the thing is or how scary the region you're in is. So as you get ranked up and get more and more grit, you get better at dealing with the horrors of the Weird West. Oh, cool. Uh, for parry, it should be half your fighting plus two, and that's the target number people would be rolling against you if they're in melee combat with you, trying to punch you, stab you, or whatnot. So if your fighting is a D4... Then it's a four total. So mine's mine's a D6, so that means mine is three plus two. So mine's oh. five. I see. So it's half the max number on the die. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Awesome. Your charisma is zero unless you pick edges or hindrances that affect it. So I'd probably leave that blank until we get to that point. And then toughness is half your vigor plus two. So my vigor is a D8. So that's four plus two. So my toughness is six. And then your pace should be six unless it is affected by hindrances. If you had one leg or you're slow, for example. So I'd leave that blank for now as well. Now I noticed that the pace is labeled in the book as six inches. Is that yeah. because they, they like to use uh, like miniature battle map sort of uh, yep, combat? That's, exa that's exactly it. It would be, uh, you normally would play on like a grid Yeah. Um, where, you know, you have your, your inch markers so you would you would calculate it by inch i think it's a little strange that they did it like that as opposed to feet um because it makes it a little more difficult to play via theater of the mind or any mm -hmm. other uh any other format also very clearly for american audiences because uh one inch is equal to a yard i think so three feet is that correct in, in, in game, game. Yep. yeah in, in game. game yeah mm. okay yeah they so did a weird see... conversion on it but the ranges and stuff on weapons is kind of weird too, because you'll see like range twelve, so it's talking about twelve inches. So everything's oh. like like that inch system, the spells and range weapons and stuff. Yeah, like here that. I was thinking it was like feet or or yards or something. I guess. Yeah, it's weird. Interesting. I mean, I think as far as measurements go, it's important to remember that the west of America is very different from the west of England. So, like, maybe their weird west is like a different kind of weird. That's yeah. true. Ooh. Man, uh, England in Deadlands is pretty interesting. It's one of the most whole supernatural things came about in like 64, 63, the Great Quake, it's called, where California kind of split apart into this maze. But werewolves and vampires have been a thing for like thousands of years in canon. Oh, yep. interesting. Just like in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just like yeah. in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Uh, man. Okay, so that's our derived attributes, Alex. Our derived stats. Derived stats, yeah. Thanks for calling us out on that. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the product can be found in the show notes. Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation, so go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time.
need some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit One Shot Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep, keep going. <laughs> if you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Backstory. Backstory is a cozy, thoughtful interview show featuring the most fascinating folks in role-playing. Join host Alex Roberts as she gets to know game designers, LARP rights, scholars, community organizers, and more. From emerging artists to seasoned veterans, guests open up about their creative process, what keeps them engaged, and their visions for the future of role-playing.